Hi everyone, this is Mike Walteri, Principal Analyst at Forrester and your host of Forrester Technopolitics. I am here in Chicago at Predictive Analytics World and I'm here with Eric Siegel, founder of Predictive Analytics and author of one of my favorite books because I listed it in my intro to Predictive Analytics reading list, Predictive Analytics. Um, Eric, I was really intrigued by your last chapter because it was all about uplift modeling and it, it's, it's a fascinating um, uh, approach in predictive analytics, but what is uplift modeling exactly? All right, uplift modeling is something that's an advanced method which is about predicting persuasion, predicting who's most likely to be influenceable, who can you convince, because that's what we want to do as organizations, if it's in marketing or all sorts of operations. We want to change people's behavior, have an effect in some way, and the best way to do influence is to predict it so that you can target where you're going to have that potential. In fact, the Obama campaign used this particular form of predictive analytics. Um, and in their case, they refer to it as persuasion modeling. There's a lot of uh, synonyms, uh, net lift modeling, true lift modeling, uplift modeling, I call it in most of that chapter. The difference is, instead of just predicting what they're going to do, we're predicting, will we influence them? And another way to put the same thing is we're predicting not just if I mail this person, will they buy it? I'm going to predict if I mail this person, will they buy it? And they won't buy it otherwise. Do I have to mail them in right. a sense? Are they a good person? Are they worth mailing? Yeah. So it's a little bit more directly informing that actual decision for each individual person. It's a subtle difference. That's why there's a whole chapter uh, at the end of the book about it. And that chapter's the con concepts, right? If you want to get into the real nitty gritty analytical math, you've got to go to the citations at the end of the chapter. Um, it's a pretty complex analytical thing, but the intuition is there. So in the case, for example, of the Obama campaign, which is a, just like any other marketing campaign, in their case, the product is a presidential candidate, yeah. but what you're trying to do is influence people not to buy, but to vote in your direction. Right. And again, they're not just predicting who's going to vote for our candidate, they're predicting can, can we influence them with our campaign so activities. So can we influence them, oh, campaign activities, like can yeah. we, should we knock on their door? Exactly. Should we call them? Right. So it's predicting what you should do to make them vote? Yes, so if you're a, camp a company doing marketing, yeah. you might want to decide, should I spend $2 mailing this person? The Obama campaign was doing the same thing with direct mail, but more than that, and before that, it's about the campaign volunteers, who are this army of people going around knocking on doors and f calling people. And again, just like the money you spend on direct mail, it's not a money, but it's a limited resource. It's this army. Can we make that same army much more effective, much more powerful, even though it's the same number of soldiers, by targeting them that, targeting them that much more effectively? They literally, the campaign volunteers on the ground, they literally got these lists of houses to go to, one house at a time, because those people were predicted to be positively benefited or influenced by a knock on the door. And conversely, they suppressed from that list the people and this was a, a rarer thing, less common, but definitely a part of it, is there's some voters where if you knock on their door as a campaign volunteer, you might actually reverse it. Ah, you might yeah. actually, in some cases, statistically have a better chance of pushing them in, in the wrong direction. It would have been better to leave them alone. People in the industry call this sleeping dogs. So both in marketing and, and, and any other kind ah, of campaign. So you want to let because them lie. yeah, let sleeping dogs lie. Don't yeah. don't leave well enough alone. They'll pro it'd probably be better not to do anything, not to expend the use of our resources yeah. on this person. Eric Siegel, thank you.